Batwoman is a victim. She's a victim. She's a victim of a mass trolling campaign. Oh no, what are we going to do? We're going to talk about that on this episode of Clownfish TV. This is Neon. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, we hit 65, 66,000 subs, I think. We're hoping for 100,000 soon. Helps us get found in the algorithm. If you do that, uh, we want to keep bringing you content. So hit that, hit that subscribe button. Uh, we're going to talk about the Batwoman situation now we haven't really weighed in on batwoman much since the trailer dropped a couple of months ago because i really honestly have zero interest in this show uh, i'm not a big fan of the cw dc universe shows uh, i did watch arrow religiously when it first started i loved it the first three seasons i loved it and then once they started spinning it off it just became very um soap opera-esque i guess in more and more ridiculous and that that kind of that realism that they had with the early seasons of arrow uh you know it just it, it got lost it got lost and arrow itself I, you know i popped in into like season five or whatever and i'm like yeah i just i'm not feeling this anymore i'm not feeling this show anymore uh geeky still watches the legends of tomorrow i think but um you know, for me, I just, I'm not a big fan of the CW DC shows anyway. So, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to disclaim this video with that. Uh, I have not seen Batwoman. I might check it out. Uh, I don't know, but I'm not really talking about the quality of the show so much as people's reaction to it in the media's reaction to it. And we did see something like this happen with Captain Marvel, where it almost became a, uh, situation where it was the fandom versus the media the media claiming that Carol was unfairly trolled uh, and the fans saying, no, Captain Marvel wasn't as good of a movie as it could have or should have been. And, uh, you know, Disney and Marvel are pushing Carol really hard and the fans really don't want Carol. You know, uh, we weighed in on it, uh, you know, the, this back and forth. And we actually, our review, we were as fair as we could be. We said, look, you know, the movie's okay. It wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. And frankly, Brie Larson was the weakest part of the movie. You know, if, if they cast somebody else as Captain Marvel, it might have might have actually worked better. Uh, now, here we are with Batwoman, which was review bombed uh, when they dropped the trailer. People are like, oh, God, this looks awful. This looks cringy. Again, disclaimer, I haven't seen it, uh, but I have been watching the reviews. Um, I might even check it out this weekend just to see what the big deal is. But um, yeah, so Rotten Tomatoes, 10% uh, audience score. 72% critical score. It's not really hitting it out of the park with the critical scores either. Now, you got to realize with TV shows, you don't have nearly as many uh, critical reviews, usually. You look at, like, when we covered Doctor Who, uh, you know, there there weren't as many. Uh, She-Ra, you know, the same kind of thing. There, there weren't as many um, critical reviews. It seems like a lot of uh, outlets kind of, you know, cherry-pick the reviewers to, to review the TV shows. But it's not like movie reviews where you've got reviews in, like, every freaking newspaper or whatever. Um, so you got to bear that in mind, uh, but the discussion here is about the audience score, 10%. I guess it's actually up a percent. Uh, now what's interesting, the Daily Dot is talking about Batwoman being a victim of a trolling campaign, but it actually doesn't defend the show. It doesn't defend the show. It doesn't say, well, the show's great. They're just a bunch of haters. It says, yeah, it's probably being trolled, but honestly, we, we reviewed it and it wasn't that great. Um, so that's interesting. That's really interesting. We're going to talk about this, and then we're going to talk about the ratings. Um, depending on the outlet, the ratings for Batwoman are either really good or not not that good. Uh, it depends on who you ask. You know, it depends on who you ask. Now, uh, this is coming again from the Daily Dot. Batwoman victim to mass trolling campaign of one-star reviews. Uh, while the show is reportedly not great, the number of reviews left is eyebrow raising. CW's Batwoman debuted to OK ratings when its first episode aired on October 8th, but its ratings have really taken a plunge online after trolls started bombarding its Rotten Tomatoes page with one-star ratings. According to comicbook.com, many are theorizing that some of the negative reviews have nothing to do with the show's actual quality. As of right now, the show has a 72% from critics and the audience score is only 9%. It's actually up a percent now. I think people are people are fighting back. They're fighting back. Uh, they want Batwoman to to um, you know get a fair chance, I guess. Uh, many of the negative user reviews called out the show's bad acting and poorly written script. However, Rotten Tomatoes critics' consensus is far less critical. 
Well, some of the reviews are most likely very real. Even the daily, even the daily dot agrees it's not that great. The number of reviews being left point to something much more sinister at play. Over 2,900 audience reviews have been counted by Rotten Tomatoes after the release of just one episode, which is over 2,000 more than the full season five of The Flash. Yeah, this is the thing too. You got to realize, you know, when this happens, and call it what you will. You know, but but it actually works in reverse sometimes too. When Shira uh, came out and it had near unanimous critical acclaim, but it only had like eleven or twelve outlets that that covered it, and the outlets that were covering uh, the new Shira show clearly are the target audience for that show. So it seemed like they were sort of uh, sort of hand picked. You know what I'm saying? Um, but then there were thousands and thousands of audience reviews, but they weren't necessarily troll reviews. They were, they were, uh, pro Shira reviews. And it was very odd because you don't see like most Netflix shows get that many reviews. Same thing happened with Dr. Who. You basically had, uh, kind of a sparring match in the, uh, the audience score over, you know, whether or not the show had any, any merit. Now it is different with movie scores, I guess now Rotten Tomatoes, uh, because, it's Disney because it's Marvel and because, you know, and we've speculated it's because um, they're uh, the head of Fandango has a history with the Walt Disney Company. They made sure you have to have bought a ticket to leave a verified uh, review, but it doesn't work that way with TV. You know, so TV, they can still one way or the other, they can still do this. And it, you'd really have to take all of it with kind of a grain of salt. But there are a lot of negative reviews. And if the critics were absolutely glowing over Batwoman, um, you know, I would say, well, maybe this is shenanigans, but it, I don't know. Just people watched it. They didn't like it. I don't know. I don't know. Some believe the discrepancy has everything to do with trolls investing far too much time in trying to make this series, which stars Ruby Rose as an LGBTQ superhero fail, but others online are pushing back against that narrative. Nah, I'm pretty sure it's just because of how bad it is. Uh, this Twitter user wrote comic book says, you know, Batwoman is being review bombed. This person's like, yeah, I just think it's the show's bad. The show's bad. Um, viewership numbers for Batwoman did pale in comparison to other CW shows like The Flash, Arrow, and Supergirl. Batwoman premiered to an audience of 1.8 million total viewers. Compared to the 4 million viewers who tuned in to watch both Flash and Arrow, Supergirl Season 2 saw a cool 3 million viewers. For those who missed the show's premiere and want to decide for themselves, here's when it's on, Sundays at 8. Again, comic book, Batwoman's being review bombed, uh, this person, or, uh, just bear with me. People could not be liking the show. I saw the encore and it was bad. Plus the numbers just came out and it was the lowest debut for an Arrowverse show. It was even bad numbers for the CW. Is the cup half full or is the cup half empty? It depends on which media outlet is covering it. It's very interesting though. The daily dot, if the show was actually decent and being unfairly criticized, I think the Daily Dot would absolutely call this out, but when they're reviewing it themselves, they're like, it's not very good. Um, you know, it is what it is. You know, so you got to wonder. You got to wonder. Um, so the ratings, again, depending on who you ask, if you go to the rap, it draws 1.8 million viewers. Kids say the darndest things got three times that. Three times that. But then you go out to Deadline, you know, Sunday Night Football falls to season low. Batwoman and Kids Say the Darndest Thing off to respectable starts. Batwoman pilot rebroadcast draws over a million viewers uh, on Tuesday because they rebroadcast it to make sure they can get more people watching it, I guess. I mean, I'll be honest, uh, Sunday night is not a good time slot, you know, for, for any show, I think. It's just not a good uh, time slot anymore. But, uh, you know, it, it is the cup half full or half empty. Um, the, most of the reviews I've heard are that the show is not that great. Again, it's just a pilot. But, you know, it, it could just be part of a bigger problem, too, that people are cooling off on the Arrowverse. You know, like I said, I was heavily invested in Arrow when it first started. Loved that show. It was uh, can't miss TV for me. I had to see it. And uh, right up there with uh, Doctor Who, you know, it was like Arrow and Doctor Who. I watched both of those shows, um, you know, and and then I just felt like Arrow kind of jumped the shark. You know, at that point, I'd lost interest in The Flash. I've lost interest in Legends of Tomorrow. I think I watched most of the first season of Legends of Tomorrow. I just lost interest in 
the Arrowverse. I thought it kind of uh, kind of got ridiculous, and and I just wasn't invested anymore. And you know, maybe people just aren't into it. Maybe they're not into it. But you know what? People are allowed to like and dislike whatever they want to. And, uh, you know, it does seem like a lot of the reviews for Batwoman are lukewarm at best. And I'm starting to get the vibe that some of these news outlets uh, realize that pushing back against uh, a vocal majority of fans is not a good idea. We saw how this went down with Captain Marvel, where it actually, I think, hurt Captain Marvel more to have the media out there constantly defending it you know, constantly telling people they were awful for having an opinion, it actually hurt Captain Marvel in the long run, hurt the reputation of that movie, especially with all the uh, shenanigans around uh, Rotten Tomatoes and all that. Uh, so I think these news outlets are starting to be a little more fair, uh, a little bit, maybe just a little bit, probably not the Mary Sue. I wouldn't expect the Mary Sue uh, to be fair. But uh, the Daily Dot, again, this is one of those outlets I would have uh, presumed to have, uh, you know, just kind of blindly defended Batwoman, and it's it's not doing that. Yeah, and the Mary Sue doesn't disappoint. We got to the Mary Sue. Batwoman's getting troll one-star reviews because people don't have anything better to do. They don't have anything better to do. So, but even the Mary Sue, right? Look, this is disappointing because I'm sure there are many valid criticisms of the series. I enjoy Ruby Rose as a presence, her acting had never been the best, in my opinion, but I'm willing to give it a shot. Um, plus, a lead actor being the weakest on the CW Arrowverse isn't a new thing. So, they're even admitting, like, this is not great. Oh, no, they haven't even watched it yet. I haven't even watched Batwoman. So, when the Mary Sue doesn't even watch Batwoman. The Mary Sue hasn't even, uh, the author of this uh, article, Princess Weeks, hasn't even watched Batwoman. So, the Mary Sue couldn't even muster up enough give a shit. <laughs> to watch Batwoman to defend it. So I don't know. Again, I've heard I've heard different things. I've actually heard some YouTubers uh, who I was really surprised that they liked the show. They actually liked the show. They uh, they went in expecting the worst and it wasn't the worst thing ever. Um, but it just seems like the overall reaction to this show is meh. It's just another CW show. Um, and I have to wonder if the Crisis on Infinite Earths isn't sort of the, uh, sort of the uh, swan song of the uh, Arrowverse, it, it just, I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't feel the, uh, the energy coming from this, uh, from this uh, uh, franchise anymore. It just seems like the, the, uh, the Arrowverse is definitely winding down. So I don't know, but uh, make up your own mind. You like it, you like it, you don't, you don't. Um, and that's really what I think we try to fight for here on Clownfish TV is your right to like or dislike something if that flies in the face of what the media outlets are trying to promote uh so be it so be it so maybe we'll actually check this show out this weekend give you guys our, our thoughts our unbiased thoughts on it uh i don't know i don't know uh so we're gonna wrap this one up please subscribe for more pop cultural news views and rants here on clownfish tv this has been neon we will talk later hey guys thanks for watching clownfish tv please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.